Hey everybody, so today we're gonna to be working with some really nice black obsidian. And this comes out of Mexico, and we're gonna make some cool stuff out of this. And first I wanna talk a little bit about black obsidian, what it is, where it comes from, where it forms. So this particular black obsidian, it's all over the world. This is coming from Mexico. So if you could see, you could see the shimmer, the shine, it's glass. So this is molten glass and it rapidly cooled down. And I don't know if you ever saw, you know, picture the, the, the molten lava rolling on the ground and picking up everything. All the black, the black color is just picking up all those impurities as it cools rapidly and it turns it into that deep black color. There's other types of obsidian, silver sheen, gold sheen, uh, rainbow obsidian, um, mahogany obsidian, snowflake obsidian, uh, firework obsidian, otherwise called flower obsidian. There's so many different types, but this is just cooled molten lava. So what else did this be used for? Way back, originally, I'm mean going back to ancient culture, like Mayan type stuff, they used this to make weapons. And we might be familiar with Game of Thrones, you know, fighting the White Walkers. You know, they use black obsidian for the weapons. This stuff can be sharp, sharp. And I mean, extremely sharp. So that's one thing we have to be uh, cautious about because it can take I mean, you can make blades out of this that could cut paper. I mean, it is crazy sharp. So that's what they use this for. A lot of times they would use it for weapons, tools, all different types of things. And I mean, now it's used, you know, mostly for jewelry, different things like that. But very common for this to be used as uh, weapons back in the day. You can make some cool stuff. I don't know if you've ever seen, I mean, some people carve this, whether they're making weapons or cool uh, different carvings and stuff. I've seen some really cool stuff. I actually have somewhere, it's, a, it's made out of rainbow obsidian. It's like a, unless I sold that, I can't remember, but it's like, a, like an Indian, it's so neat. I hope I didn't sell that. It's gonna bother me now, I'm gonna have to look. But. We're gonna make some cool stuff out of this from Mexico. And what we're gonna do, it, I like working with black obsidian. It's easy for me to, to rattle through this and make stuff. So I don't think it's gonna be a very long video today. Um, what I do, it's a little different from working with other crystals, minerals. It, I don't go crazy with the polish, I let the you know, the, the natural shimmer and rough, so to speak, speak for itself. So we're gonna make, a lot of times I'll take something just like this, cut the base off, and that's it. It's done. <laughs> I mean, and I'll show you, once we get over at the saw, once I start cutting, we'll take off the, the bottom and there you go. You, you make yourself one nice tower, and a lot of them aren't, real thin towers, you get these odd pieces that are really wide, um, something like this, like you just, we never know, but we're gonna make some cool stuff, so we're gonna head on over to the saw and see what we could do with this. So I will meet you guys over there, and let's get started. I'm excited. So we are over at the saw. I'm gonna start with this big piece of obsidian, and what I like to do with obsidian, like I was saying, I, I don't go crazy trying to like polish all kinds of stuff. It's so irregular at times, but it still always comes out and looks awesome. So what I'm gonna do is just take the whole bottom piece off and make this into one pretty big tower. It seems like when I work with obsidian, a lot of times I make I end up making towers just because it, it kind of works out like that. And I don't have to, I could make the cut and it just becomes its own rough 
tower, so to speak, right out of the gate without me doing much to it and going crazy with polish. So what I mean by that is once I make this cut, I, I'm done. This piece is over. And that's kind of what I like. I could, I could pump out a whole bunch of black obsidian and make really cool towers and, and different things instead of going crazy with all the, the polishing, which is the most time consuming. So let's see how this goes. I have a whole basket here. So this one, like I said, I'm gonna just take that bottom off and honestly, I'll probably get two towers out of it. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Let's cut. And that's it. <laughs> that's how easy it is. So check that out. This is done. There is no polishing needed now. I don't have to go crazy. This is going to be the bottom. So we're just going to have a beautiful, rough, very nice size tower. And that's it. That's how easy. And now this side, I took the bottom off. I have to trim that up a little but this is gonna be its own little piece for a shelf. Whoop! And you could just, boom, already done. No need to go crazy polishing. That's the part that's really cool. And obsidian is so crazy. I mean, yes, it can take a polish if you cut this in, you know, perfect cubes and slices, but I always like the rough and this kind of just speaks for itself and comes out awesome. So <laughs> that's it. I'm gonna, I am gonna trim this little piece off um, just so it sits perfectly flat, but that's about it. And we're gonna keep going. I have a whole bunch of different pieces here. So we will see in a minute what else we're gonna make, but it's gonna be a bunch of stuff similar to this. Like I was saying earlier, you have to be careful because it's glass. This can really cut and you could do some damage if you're not careful here. These can get extremely sharp and that's why they made tools and uh, weapons out of this stuff because this could be razor sharp if it's cut thin enough. So here's another one, just another little bottom and it turns into its own little beautiful tower, just like that. Super easy to work with, I love it. Let's go to the rest of the batch. We're gonna blow through these. Like I said, this is probably not gonna be a very long video just because I don't have to go crazy with polishing. Actually, some of these I might not have to polish at all. I, I would say the majority of these we're not gonna be polishing. So this might be an extremely quick video. <laughs> Let's uh, knock the rest of these out and see what we got. All right, so I think we're already done. <laughs> I had a whole bunch of pieces, but this always goes really quick. You can, I could really pump out a ton of material if I'm working with black obsidian because there's no polish. So the way I do it anyway. So we are gonna get these all cleaned up and probably just go straight to the light this time and, and show them off. And it is really that easy. So. Let's uh, see what we got and see how they all look under the light. So here we are, all ready to show off our black obsidian straight from the volcano. So we got 
everything all done. Now, like I said, the best part and my favorite part of Black Obsidian, for me specifically, is its ease of cutting. So I, again, am not going crazy polishing all this stuff, which would be still not bad, but that's just not the way I do it. It's still pretty easy to polish, but though I always go with just its natural beauty and letting its natural rough state speak for itself. Literally all I'm doing is just slicing off and making a base and letting its irregular patterns and natural everything else work for itself. And the the thing is it's it's you can get black obsidian in big pieces. I have a piece of black obsidian as a matter of fact on my porch. <laughs> I I'm a little crazy that is Oh man, what would it be comparable to? It's bigger than a basketball, twice the size of a basketball. Just a huge, round, massive piece of black obsidian. It is epic. So I mean, you can make big slices of this, polish it on four sides. You can do so much. Generally though, what I like to do is... Just work around what it looks like because it's so irregular at times. So different. So, like, I mean, none of these are going to all be, like, the same type of shapes. And it's it's all over the map. So I will work around what it looks like and then just slice it in half and make two beautiful pieces. And let it speak for itself. That's the best way. For me. For me. But. I think these come out really good. Don't have to t put a like ton of time into it. Great to work with too. Awesome metaphysical properties, which we're going to talk about in a second. And you have that beautiful shimmer shine. I mean, it's glass. You can see all the glass like striations in it. Like this one, just the way it forms too. Like look at all the you know, the wave, like you ever break glass and you kind of see that pattern in it. That's what you got here. Some of these really nice, pretty big towers. The part that I like the most, honestly, is how they look all different. Uh, to me, that makes it more interesting. You have like, like this guy just looks like a, a top of a, what are, what are one of those? Like some kind of tool. And that's where you could see where they did use and make tools out of this stuff. Like in, like maybe I'm thinking of an axe handle, something like that. But I mean, you could see how you could easily make some kind of tool out of this. And again, you have to be careful working with this stuff. This can be really sharp, really sharp. You could cut yourself on this easily. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But I think these come out really cool. And they have, they're one of the most useful, I think, in terms of metaphysical properties. And obsidian is great when you're, it, it should be in everybody's collection. It should be in, if you are definitely delving into the world of metaphysical properties, for crystals and, and minerals, you have to have some black obsidian. It's like one of the the top 10 to have in your collection. And it, it has uses that are really good. Like in terms of shield protection, the top thing with black obsidian is shielding from negative everything negative vibrations negative entities um negative all types of negative psychic attacks anything like that black obsidian repels it this is like your shield when you're you're battling against that deep negative stuff whether it's within yourself 
whether it's external in your environment, such as like some type of negative entity. It's also great in terms of grounding, but it is a shield. That is my number one for black obsidian. Just using it as a shield to protect. It's a, it's one of the best protectors and repellers and negative entities as well. Definitely. I mean, it's also, it just, it's a deep grounder and it also will bring, it's a great emotional healer too, believe it or not. This is most associated with the root chakra, but I believe black obsidian can help your entire system, your entire energy system, which is another great thing. But it, it, it can really reach, help you to reach a deeper state and it can help with emotional healing where it brings everything to the surface so you can work with it. Very effective is that. And a lot of people, I don't think, use it in terms of that. I think most people use black obsidian if they're looking for like a shield, that type of thing, to repel. Combine this with some black tourmaline. Oh, man. But what does everybody think? I think these come out really cool. They're different. They're unique. They're all like, you know, you could put this from whatever side. Um, let me show you something else here. I brought this one. This is what you're looking at, too, when you cut it right down the middle. Now, you can see on the bottom here, same thing. So this is what you're looking at whenever you cut it and slice it. This is what it comes out to be. So you have to really work with the polisher and strip down all that and get it back to that glass shine. But I have seen some stuff with uh, black obsidian, rainbow obsidian, just amazing looking. It just looks amazing. Uh, this one here is a hefty little guy, pretty good size. And it, it just has all this cool stuff on the back. Like, I mean, you can, sit this in any fashion you want and then when it's time to fight the white walkers you grab it off your shelf boom you're ready to go <laughs> anybody that doesn't know what the white walkers are they're like what in the heck is this guy talking about <laughs> i i think most do though but i'll leave it at that google it if you don't know so that's about it for a black obsidian um Definitely going to be making some more videos. I want to do more on obsidian. There's so many different types of obsidian. So there's a lot to do. Flower obsidian, which is also called firework obsidian. It's one of my favorites. Um, gold sheen. You have silver sheen. There's um, mahogany obsidian, also called mecha obsidian. Snowflake obsidian. There's so many cool variations. Um... I don't know if I already said rainbow. Rainbow obsidian is just, if you get a, a, a nice grade, oh, it's just so beautiful. So beautiful. And I, I also, again, not I can't do it, but I love to see what people can make out of obsidian. I mean, Google some of that stuff. G obsidian carvings, and it, it is it is mind-blowing what some people can, can do with this stuff and create. So... All right, I think that's about it. Um, definitely check out the upcoming videos I'm going to have. I'm going to have a um, bunch coming up soon. I think I'm going to do some Chris Akala ones, and uh, I'm just going to keep going and making stuff. Definitely uh, watch out for more stuff coming up. So that's about it today. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the Black Obsidian. I think it came out pretty cool, but... Maybe you guys will say, hey, it didn't. It's terrible. It's off. I've never seen such terrible black obsidian before. It's, it's the worst. <laughs> and that's okay, too. All right. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.